Hello guys! For today's lesson, we're going to talk about solving quadratic equation by extracting square roots. So in solving quadratic equations, there are things that we're going to consider. First is the standard form. So the equation must be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 where a, b, and c are real numbers such that a should not be equal to 0. For example, if we have 2x squared plus 5x is equal to 7, so rewriting it into its standard form, it will be 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 is equal to 0. Now what if we have the given equation x squared plus 4 is equal to 13? How can we solve for the values of x? Now let's take this example. Say we're going to solve the equation x squared minus 1 is equal to 24 using the square root method. Now solving quadratic equation by the use of the square root method, make sure that the equation must be on the form x squared is equal to c. So here are the steps. First, we're going to isolate x squared on the left side of the equation. Now notice that in our equation, we have to add 1 to both sides of the equation so that we can eliminate negative 1 on the left side. And then combining like terms, it will give us x squared is equal to 25, which is on the form of x squared is equal to c. Then solve the values of x by taking the square roots of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is equal to x and the square root of 25 since it's a perfect square, which is equal to positive negative 5. Therefore, the roots or the solutions of the equation x squared minus 1 is equal to 24 or x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 5, which can also be written as a solution set. To determine whether the root satisfies the given equation, so we're going to check it by substitution. So the original equation is x squared minus 1 is equal to 24 when x is equal to 5, so we're going to substitute 5 to the equation. And that will be the square of 5 minus 1 is equal to 24. Simplifying it further, we now we have 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. Therefore, 24 is equal to 24. And that means that 5 is a solution. Same procedure that we're going to apply with the second value of x, which is negative 5. So we're going to substitute the value of x, which is negative 5, to every equivalence of x. And that will be the square of negative 5 minus 1 is equal to 24. Simplifying it further, now we have 25 minus 1 is equal to 24, meaning 24 is equal to 24. Therefore, it suggests that negative 5 is also a solution on the equation x squared minus 1 is equal to 24. Next example, we have negative 2x squared plus 15 is equal to x squared minus 12. Now, the equation is not on the form of x squared is equal to c. So, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to combine like terms by subtracting 15 on both sides of the equation. And that will give us negative 2x squared is equal to x squared minus 27. But still, we still have x squared on the right side of the equation. So, again, we're going to combine like terms by subtracting x squared on both sides of the equation and that will give us negative 3x squared is equal to negative 27. Multiplying both sides of the equation by the multiplicative inverse of negative 3 or dividing both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of x squared which is equal to negative 3 or we can simply divide both sides of the equation by the value of a which is equal to negative 3 and that will give us x squared is equal to 9 since negative 27 divided by negative 3 they are both negative so that will give us a positive integer which is equal to 9. Now the equation is on the form x squared is equal to c. Now extracting the roots of both sides of the equation it will give us x is equal to positive negative 3. Therefore, the solution of the equation negative 2x squared plus 15 is equal to x squared minus 12 or x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 3. 
Example number 3, we have 4x squared is equal to 49. Now, the equation is on the form of ax squared is equal to c. So, the first thing that we're going to do to convert it into the form x squared is equal to c is that we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the value of a which is equal to 4. Now, x squared is equal to 49 over 4 is on the form of x squared is equal to c. So, the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to extract the root of both sides of the equation. And that will be the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 49 over 4. Now, notice that 49 and 4 are perfect square. You can rewrite the numerator and denominator as separate radicals and that will give us the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 49 over the square root of 4. Simplify it further. Now, x is equal to positive and negative 7 halves. Therefore, the solutions of the equation for x squared is equal to 49 are x is equal to negative 7 halves or x is equal to 7 halves. So by substitution, we can check whether the values of x satisfies the equation 4x squared is equal to 49. So the first value of x is equal to 7 halves. So what are we going to do is that we're going to substitute it and now it will give us 4 multiplied to the square of 7 halves which should be equal to 49. And then squaring 7 halves and that will give us 49 over 4. So we can multiply 4 and 49 or we can simply cancel 4 and the denominator of 49 which is equal to 4 and that will give us 49 is equal to 49. Therefore, 7 halves satisfies the equation 4x squared is equal to 49. Next, when x is equal to negative 7 halves, so from the equation 4x squared is equal to 49, we're going to substitute the value of x which is equal to negative 7 halves. So substituting it, we now have 4 multiplied to the square of negative 7 halves, which should be equal to 49. And uh, squaring negative 7 halves, it will give us positive 49 over 4, and then we can cancel the whole number 4 and the denominator 49 which is equal to 4 and that would be equal to 49. Meaning, negative 7 halves satisfies the equation 4x squared is equal to 49. For the fourth example, we have 2 multiplied to the square of the quantity x minus 3 minus 72 is equal to 0. First, we have to transpose negative 72 to the right side of the equation. And then, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Simplifying it, it will give us the square of the quantity x minus 3 is equal to 72 over 2, which is equal to 36. Applying the square root method, we can now extract the roots of both sides of the equation. And that gives us x minus 3 is equal to positive negative 6. And combining like terms, and that will be x is equal to 3, positive, negative 6. Simplifying it further, we now have x is equal to 3 minus 6 or x is equal to 3 plus 6. Now, it gives us the solution of the equation x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 9. Now, for example, number 5, we have 7 multiplied to the quantity of negative x squared plus 1 plus 6 multiplied to the quantity of x squared minus 1, which is equal to negative 17. In this particular example, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to apply the distributive property of multiplication. Using the concept of the distributive property of multiplication, so we're going to Multiply 7 to the terms inside the parentheses, which are negative x squared and 1. And that will be negative 7x squared plus 7. So same thing that we're going to do with 6 multiplied to the quantity of x squared minus 1. The products are 6x squared minus 6, which is equal to negative 17. Next step, we're going to combine like terms. So we have to combine negative 7x squared plus 6x squared. 
and we also have 7 minus 6 equals negative 17. Simplifying it further, we now have negative x squared plus 1 is equal to negative 17. For us to eliminate 1 on the left side of the equation, then we have to subtract 1 on both sides of the equation so that we can combine like terms. And that will give us negative x squared is equal to negative 18. Rewriting the equation to the form x squared is equal to c, then we have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. Now we have the equation x squared is equal to 18. And then we can apply the square root method by extracting the roots of both sides of the equation. Square root of 18 is not a perfect square, so we have to find a perfect square factor of 18 and that will be 9 times 2. So square root of 18 can be factored as the square root of 9 multiplied to the square root of 2, which means that square root of 9 is the perfect square factor of 18. Simplifying it further, we now have the value of x, which is equal to positive negative 3 square root of 2. Now we have the solutions x is equal to 3 square root of 2 or x is equal to negative 3 square root of 2. That's all for today guys. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more video updates. Thanks. watching